Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game from the War of the Ring 2023 World Tournament. So I am playing Free People against Ari, and this is the top 16. We are in the top 16. I won my first game against him, and let's jump right in. So I don't have any playable cards round one. Oh, they allocated zero eyes and rolled three. At least they got two musters. And I have zero playable cards, so that Palantir is a little sad. They got Worn with Sorrow and Toil, which isn't bad early on. I'm not sure if they're going to play that with their character die, but it's possible. And Rage of the Dunlendings is something you can plan around for, plan around as Shadow. It's the one card that you can use a muster die to actually move armies with. All right, I start by moving the Fellowship, and they miss. And they, play, they do play Worn with Sorrow and Toil right away. That's nice. You can get a lot of value out of that have House of the Stewards. I don't probably mind losing that too much. I move again, I get hit, and it's a three. So Gandalf goes away, and there goes House of Stewards, and Strider is guide. They muster Isengard toward war. I have to draw a card. I draw a strategy card. Still don't have anything playable. I guess Power of Tom Bombadil is, but that's not any better than simply mustering. All right, they get Saruman, and then I muster elves towards war. All right, so their military is a little slow. Some people move Baradur to, and they put it on the cracks of doom. But really, this is this is in Gorgoroth. It's really a eight eight hit point army in Gorgoroth, and I think people do that just because they end up splitting to Morinon later, so it saves them a little time. But I think it's a little clearer if you just put the armies where it should be because they're all in one big army. Ah, look. I think I asked them to fix it because that is much easier to see. Yes, that is the actual army that is in Gorgoroth. All right. They allocate one eye, roll no more, and I get a Will of the West. Okay. So it's nice to get Gandalf turn two. Obviously, I'm a little sad to not get any other movement, but it's probably still nice to get Gandalf. All right. They get Sauron to war. I pass. They get Stormcrow by drawing a card. I guess they don't really have anything else. Yeah, that's the one slightly disappointing thing about, yeah, they didn't have a good playable card, so they had to draw a card. They move armies around. They moved from Gorgoroth to Morinon and Dol Guldur to South Anduin Vale. Maybe they're coming after the elves. I have quite a few musters showing, so we'll see what I end up doing. They move to Daggerlad. I muster the elves one away from war. They continue to move up toward the elves. And I think they said after the game that they did not expect me to muster the elves again and let them get the Witch King on turn two, which obviously is a fast Witch King. But my feeling is it's going to let me get a lot of defense, and it looks like they are going for the elves. So I muster the elves all the way to war. They obviously get the Witch King, and then I um, muster the elves in Woodland Realm. And then with this... Palantir, they draw a card. So I kind of infer from that that they probably don't have Nazgul, uh, the Ringwraiths are abroad, or the Black Captain Commands, because I think if they had that, one, you wouldn't really want to draw up to five cards and have to discard later, and two, you want to get this army up to Woodland Realm as soon as possible before there's a chance to muster all around. I think that's probably what I would do if I had those in my hand because I just want to get these armies going. So, all right, so that's my analysis. And then we go to next round. I draw Smeagol Helps Nice Master, perfectly fine card. Riders of Theoden, happy to see that pretty early. Ooh, and I also have the red arrow. So, um, and I did have that in hand at the time that I got the elves to war. So I knew that these nations should now be active. So I knew that I could potentially get um, the red arrow going, which is nice because you can only play that once once Gondor is active, which happens when the Witch King enters play. So Gondor actually is active right now. All right, so they did they top decked they top decked um, Black Captain commands, which you know they did have two cards, so it was like a ten percent chance, eleven percent chance. All right, um, they allocate zero eyes because I didn't move last round which I think is clever of them. And then I get three movement. So I start off by moving. If I had gotten more musters, 
I wouldn't have minded that because I could have just mustered up the elves. So it is a, you know, I, yes, the fellowship movement is good, but also mustering elves is good. That was sort of my plan. All right. So they get the Southrons and Easterlings towards war. I keep moving the fellowship. They hit me this time. It's just a one. I'll take that corruption. They get the Southrons and Easterlings all the way to war. I guess their thinking is it just reveals less of their strategy. So why not? And then I start passing. They move armies around. I pass and let them besiege Lorien with only one, um, with no musters. So I didn't get any musters into Lorien. My feeling is at least that's going to waste a little time because this army in Dimmerdale probably can't take out um, Lorien. And so they'll have to reinforce it. And unless they top decked, uh, Black Captain Commands or Ring of the Sir Abroad, they're not going to be able to besiege uh, Woodland Realm. But, of course, I could infer that, <laughs> that they did because they're playing this way. All right, so they keep moving. And now um, I have a choice of moving that regular into Old Forest Road to try and block the Witch King. And I do have scouts. Um, but I guess I'm thinking I want to play scouts as a this this red arrow as a card because it's a powerful mustering effect and I can just get an elite outright in Woodland Realm. So that's why I did it. All right. They move. Interesting. They attacked Dale. I'm a little surprised by that. Why? Why bother attacking there? I guess they wanted to. I'm not sure what. Uh, they wanted to cycle Great Host, or they just thought it was an opportunity. I'm a little confused by that. They they could have just gone to Old Forest Road. I guess they didn't have an army movement, so they're like, well, I'm going to move this army once. Might as well take out Dale. All right, so I do play scouts in that case because I want to make sure that that survives. And I thought maybe they have um, Swarm of Bats, in which case they have to roll a six on nine dice, which is... Decent chance, but not guaranteed. And if they don't have Swarm of Bats, then now I just managed to keep that unit alive. So, all right. Uh, they get one victory point, And then I retreat into Woodland Realm because I don't know. I'm claiming that I have... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure why. It's a little weird because if I think that they don't have Black Captain Commands, which it certainly kind of seems like they don't, then um, why not retreat into Erebor, planning on mustering again in Woodland Realm? So this lets them besiege Erebor um, pretty freely, but at the same time, uh, this faction is at war. All of these, uh, I guess the North isn't quite at war. So we forgot to move the North. The, more, the North should be two towards war right now. There we go. All right, I place Meagle Helps Nice Master. And then, and I don't know, maybe I should have just, if I'm going to move again, maybe I should move first in case I get revealed, in which case I could use Strider's ability to hide. All right, they do have Black Captain Commands, and he he attacks Erebor. Yeah, so, so I guess I should have... Um, I should have just retreated into Erebor, but all right, I go ahead and move here and they miss. It was 50-50 chance. All right, they miss. Um, Hill Trolls drawn as a strategy card because they didn't have anything productive to play. I'm a little surprised they didn't play Horde from the East there, seeing the state of Woodland Realm. I guess they're just leaving Woodland Realm as is. They're going to take out Erebor and then be done with it. Given that I had five cards in my hand and I was going up to six by drawing, I'm not sure that I would have drawn there. I guess they're really pushing for Corsairs because that would be pretty nice. Though Elves are at war, so I could have Kyrdans. All right, I guess we'll see. That was an interesting play. Um, so I have five movement. It's turn three. Gandalf the White is in play. That's good. Um, they discard threats and promises. That's very reasonable. And they discard breaking the fellowship. Okay. Easy, pretty easy discards. That's good. I think about declaring why I guess my analysis was I'm probably going to get, um, revealed at some point. So I might as well declare out. Then I save the tile from Moria 
and then and now I have I'm three spaces away from Minas Tirith, so I could potentially crown Aragorn. All right, they allocate one eye roll, two more, and I get a bunch of movement again. I think that's almost my identical roll to last time, and I start by moving right away, and they miss. Okay, Shadows on the Misty Mountains. They're going to reinforce their Lorien Siege. And here I separate Strider because I guess I'm going to play Mirror of Galadriel. And okay, it risks Day Without Dawn. They have a one-third chance of having it. I just, I really want, okay, I bring Boromir too. I really want six dice. All right, they attack in Erebor. Deadly Strife against Daylight. They still get three hits. I get two hits. Okay, they press and they play another Deadly Strife. Okay, so they annihilate Erebor and I get two hits back. So, all right, so they very efficiently took out Erebor. I could at this point, dwarves are, dwarves are at war. I could at this point, like, try and muster in Iron Hills, but... I think that's not a very productive use of that die. It's not going to really slow down Shadow much. They're probably going to attack it anyway. So, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a mistake. But all right, so I have Will of the West. They don't have day. They don't have day without dawn. So I get Aragorn turn four. They merge up in East Rune. I crown Aragorn. They attack into Iron Hills and manage to miss. I remember that, and I hit. So this dwarf, this dwarf was super buff. And uh, that's funny. And then they play Hill Trolls. Okay, so they're coming back. They're coming back to um, Woodland Realm to try and take it. I mean, that is a seriously buff stronghold. That is nine hit points with two leadership. Do they have 18 hit points here? How much do they have? This is, they have 13 hit points. So I have 14 counting this guy in Dale. So relatively, I feel like that's pretty tough. Going to be pretty tough for them. All right, I am using up the Elven Force Pool. I only have one Elite left, so that I am starting to worry a little bit about Rivendell. I'm also worried about taking regulars as casualties, so or downgrading Elites into regulars. All right, happy to see Imrahil of Dol Amroth. Happy to see there is another way. I also have Grey Company, so that could be useful in uh, Gondor. All right, I declare the Fellowship one step, and now I need to basically move two times... This turn, two times next turn, and then just keep defending. So I just move the fellowship along. They miss army movement into Dale. Because I didn't get any army movement, this regular in Vale of Karnan is just not a huge threat. So, all right, they're thinking they changed their mind. They moved, okay, they're they're doing more efficient movement because they're moving from Moria to Dimrald Dale as one half action and Erebor to Dale as half an action. And then next turn, they're going to complete that movement into Lorien and into Dale. All right. I play the Grey Company because... And I'm using a character die. Wow. All right. I'm a little surprised by that. I, I, I would have expected to move first to see if I get hit. Oh, I see. I see. I ha there's, um, there's one with Sauron Toil. That's why. Okay, so I'm playing this first to get it out of my hand. And uh, I draw Thranduil's Archers and Power Too Great. Okay, that's, I'm sure, will be annoying for Shadow. And uh, then I play There Is Another Way just to heal one because I don't want to lose it out of my hand. And then they move Nazgul around. And the one slightly annoying thing on my part is that I did not... Um, I do not have a way to play power to great, which would have been fun to get to stall them. And they could have, they could have gotten rid of it, but they would have had to give up Grand or on, on they went, which wouldn't be ideal for them. Denethor's folly. They probably don't mind getting rid of it all. All right. So they move people around and now I just move the fellowship. They hit me and they reveal me. So not ideal for me. Then they play Grand into Lorien, Swarm of Bats. They get three hits. I get one back. Uh, they... They get one hit. I get one hit back. Oh, I took one hit and I killed the regular 
because I thought my chances of winning this siege are extremely low and I'd rather preserve that regular in the force pool in the reinforcements so that I can downgrade units in Woodland Realm and also so that, that I guess that wouldn't matter, but so that I could muster them in Rivendell, I guess is my thinking there. All right, so um, they take out Lorian and there's still this monster army here. That is definitely a concern. They can come, they can pivot up to Rivendell. They can come down to Helm's Deep. So maybe I should have taken casualties differently just to try and inflict a few more hits. Tricky. Um, okay, and there comes the army to Parth Celebrant, and now in Umbar. So I am worried that they have Corsairs. Obviously, I would prefer that they didn't. I think... All right, so I play Riders of Theoden. I want to make sure I get this army from Edoras into Westamnet before the Witch King arrives. And they continue to move armies around and now I play Imrahil of Dol Amroth because why I could have muster yeah Gondor is nowhere near near war so I'm just playing this now and hopefully that's enough to help hold Dol Amroth they play on on they went because why not they don't have anything else they really need to play right now and it's my turn so Monsters Round, Worm Tongue, pretty useless cards. The Desperate Battle effect is okay. I get Path of the Woeses, Challenge of the King, not that useful. Um, all right, they allocate one, I roll two, and I get this crazy roll. And I think that they probably don't have Day Without Dawn since they didn't have it the start of last round either. Um, this is tricky because I want to get this army to Westamnet, but I also don't have scouts anymore, and I don't want this army to just get annihilated by the Witch King. Uh, I also want to hide the Fellowship and get into Mordor this round. So, hard to know. Uh, I go ahead and move armies. It certainly feels like I might have scouts or Ents or, or something like that. So, um, I retreat like that. M maybe maybe this was slightly wrong and this regular from an elite from Fords of Eisen should have come to Westamnet instead. That might have been better. They still don't have Day Without Dawn. They play Monsters Roused. I'm a little surprised by that. I guess, oh right, and they also have Rage of the Dunlendings. Okay, so that's pretty efficient attack at Rivendell. Um, all right, I hide the Fellowship now. They play Rage of the Dunlendings. That is that is a pretty nice, pretty nice army gathered there. All right, I move the Fellowship, they miss. They pile up outside of Trollshaws and I muster I play power to great. Okay, so I'm just I'm just messing with them. And it's a little risky now because what if they reveal me or play a tile drawing card or something? I guess they only drew one card. All right, so then they immediately get rid of it, which is good. They get rid of um, Denethor's Folly and Wormtongue. Great cards, probably the, some of the worst cards they have. So that's good for them. I muster once into Rivendell and then they attack it and I move the fellowship and they hit, but they only get a two. So I'm not revealed. And uh, what did I just lose? I don't remember what that card was. Um, it didn't seem particularly important. We could go back in the video. Someone <laughs> could tell me if they were watching. All right, so they move Nazgul around. They've certainly seemed like they're preparing Corsairs of Umbar, so I'm reluctant to muster Gondor, but this is not like particularly easy things for them to fight. Um, I do have to be careful with the regulars in Rivendell if they like do... Um, if they just do three hits and I downgrade to three regulars, then all of these elites in Woodland Realm cannot downgrade. So there are some things I have to be careful careful of there. All right, help on look for Corn of Gondor, not particularly useful. They drew into Fighting Uruk High. That's pretty nice. I declare in Mordor on turn seven. They allocate an I and roll three more. And I continue to get good movement. I just chug along with the Fellowship and they get an I. That's pretty nice for them. Three in a reveal. What's the hunt pool like? So there's one red, one blue, and otherwise pretty average. Okay. Um, I don't even remember what... 
Oh, Challenge of the King, I think I lost before. And I don't know what I just lost now, but clearly I wasn't particularly... Oh, Horn of Gondor, right. So not particularly concerned with those losing those cards. And um, now I, I don't mind if I get some good cards like uh, Mithril Coat and Sting or something like that because I can separate Mary, which is different than losing him uh, as a casualty. So I will use his guide ability to separate and therefore... I'm, I'm safe, basically, from Warren with Sauron and Toil for the rest of the game. All right, they play Fighting uruk in Rivendell. They start with Orc Patrol. I'm a little surprised by that, but I guess they're cycling into... They're trying to cycle into the Red Tiles because they think that Orc Patrol would not do enough damage to really matter. I mean, I just pulled an eye out, so can I really move that fat i guess i guess they just want to make sure they win this combat all right that's interesting um they do get three hits so that's nice and i get one so this is exactly the situation i'm talking about it's probably fine because they are there's fighting or a kai and so probably they're just gonna inflict more casualties but if for some reason they don't then it could yeah, I don't know what I would do. I think I think I just downgrade. Um, I just pull these out of the reinforcements. I think that's fine. Um, maybe I go one and one. Um, let's see what I do. No, I just go three, right? Because these are all gonna die. These these guys these guys are just gonna die. So I might as well try and inflict as many casualties back at them. They get one hit. I get two hits automatically press they play Isildur's Bane here wow so is that really worth it they're really trying to hurry but I mean there are these threes and the two and the two I don't know they could have put some corruption pressure on the fellowship with those cards all right, they get the hits they need. I get two more hits, but it doesn't matter. So um, that's the end of Rivendell. I mean, they were they wanted to kill Rivendell. So they are up to seven, uh, seven victory points now. So maybe they're thinking they can get to 10. I don't know. They don't have Corsairs. Next round, they can get to 10. And maybe I won't get enough movement. It's possible. I still have three eyes all right i hide the fellowship they get the mouth of sauron i move they get another eye all right so so that was three reveal four reveal um and now corruption is certainly a little bit of a concern uh they move armies they're going they move into druid and forest i guess because they're gonna try and take out minas tirith okay I'm a little surprised by that. I do have two companions in there. All right, I hide. They attack Minas Tirith. All right, I draw a character card, because why not? And then they attack Pilar Gear. They get a hit. And um, now they're at eight victory points. So I, interesting. So I decide instead of mustering in Dol Amroth with that muster, I'm going to move the fellowship because now that I have Bilbo Song, even if I hit an eye right here, I'm probably fine. And I want to, and also the odds of hitting that are low. And I want to make sure that I can destroy it next round because... It's certainly possible that they could get to um, 10 victory points next round by either taking out Dol Amroth or Minas Tirith with, with these armies combined. I don't think that I don't think that Woodland Realm will fall, but at least I also can't retake Dale. So, all right. And I also, by the way, have help on look for, and now Gondor is at war. So these units in Osgiliath, you know, particularly if I could have retreated from Pelargir into Osgiliath, these units in Osgiliath could could make some attacks against Minas Tirith just to whittle them down a little. Could be fun. All right, so um, three eyes in a row. 
three eyes in a row, three reveal, four reveal, five reveal. Uh, not good for the fellowship. Um, five reveal is unpleasant. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe I also would have done that differently if I hadn't seen Orc Patrol and, and Isildur's Bane gone and Shadow having zero character cards in hand. So now I have to make two more moves on four corruption. I'm probably still fine because, I mean, if I hit both the threes or if I hit the stop, I could be in trouble, but I'm probably okay. All right. So they draw a card and they draw a red tile. Wow. Nice. All right. I have guards of the Citadel. That is a great top deck. There and back again, not as useful, but Brave Stand is still, you you know, could be okay in Minas Tirith. Um, I get rid of Thrandall's Archers because they're doing just fine. Allocate one eye, roll one more, and I get two movement. So um, this is a little nerve wracking. Uh, I'm certainly going to start by hiding. They put, yeah, that's interesting. So they put a, they use a ring to put another eye in there. I guess that's worth it. I probably would have played the red tile. I guess they think I'm not going to move if I'm worried I'm going to hit an eye, but there's only one eye in there. So I would have been more inclined to put get the red tile in first and then... Oh, wait. They can do both. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So they put an eye. When you when you put an eye using a ring, it doesn't actually take your action. So great. So cool. So they added a added a um, eye to the hunt box, and they play the ring as mine. So that is very unpleasant. There are now two eyes in there, and three corruption would be a serious threat. I go ahead and play Bilbo's song to heal up, and then they move the Witch King around. I know that I have guards of the Citadel if they go for Minas Tirith, and I know that I can muster in Dol Amroth. So, all right, so I muster in Dol Amroth the hard way. They move towards Minas Tirith. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess they were worried about me coming back and taking Pilar gear, but I'm, I guess, and I'll, but yeah, I'm I'm wary of going after. Um, going after Minas Tirith. I guess there is House of Stewards, which I would have had to top deck. And there is Guards of the Citadel. So about 50% chance. The thing is, there's nothing else that can really help reinforce Dol Amroth because there are no elves left for Cirden ships. And I've already played Imrahil of Dol Amroth. So I think I would rather fight this with only one leadership than, than this with two companions in it. All right, I move the fellowship. Okay, it's a one. Very happy to see that. I take one corruption. So now, even because that was only one corruption, even an eye, a regular eye, doesn't kill me. So, yeah. All right, so they go ahead and um, besiege Minas Tirith. I play, obviously, Guards of the Citadel. And... Now they try and attack Minas Tirith. What do they have? Oh, they have a very nice We Come to Kill. That's good. I play Brave Stand because I saw them play a strategy card. And they get to roll two dice and they hit on... They get one hit uh, after Brave Stand and I get four hits. And then they get We Come to Kill for three... Three hits, very nice. And they redraw dress, desperate battle. So I think they just they stop because they they have a they haven't used the mouth of Sauron yet. So all right, so they attack into Minas Tirith again. I play confusion. Maybe it'll work. They get two hits against me, two hits against themselves, three hits against me. Very nice. I get three hits against them. And they have one elite left. Yeah, so obviously I am going to try and destroy the ring. So 
The only things that stop me are the red tiles. I go ahead and do it and get a one. All right, so the ring is destroyed. Minas Tirith would have fallen, so they absolutely um, played that correctly. They did have 15 hit points, so, and Pelargir is holding too. So, you know, maybe with different roles, I might have been able to wait until next round or given myself more options because I could also take Pelargir if I had a big army in Dol Amroth, but that's not what I rolled, so I just went to destroy the ring. The other option was to attack out of Woodland Realm into Dale, but I had good, very good chances. Um, there were 11 tiles, and um, only two of them stopped me. So I had uh, two out of 11 chance of losing, or yeah, two out of 11 chance of losing, which is, I guess, 18%. So f very favored in the end. Um, let's look at statistics. Um these are reversed, so I was definitely high on my hits. It didn't really hurt them that much. I was pretty high on movement. Um, they were a little low on attacks. Um, yeah, I, it feels like it was a pretty balanced game, right? This is turn eight, and they're getting 10 victory points the same round that I'm destroying the ring. So it was it was quite close, I think, overall. Um, it was a nice defensive Woodland Realm, but they countered it pretty well by attacking other places. So, nice game. And uh, now I am on to the top eight. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the day.